here today to meet the incredible Carol Weston. She writes for people of all ages. She writes for kids, teenagers, grown-ups. And she's here to visit with us and talk about her work. So can we give a big round of applause to Carol? I love talking to fourth graders. This is exciting for me, so thank you for coming, you guys. How did I get started? Well, I'm the girl wearing red and white there. That's me. And I have two big brothers, Mark and Eric. They both like to write too, and Mark's written a number of books. And my parents um, were both writers. My mom was the garden editor of House and Garden magazine, so she liked writing garden about gardening, and she liked writing poetry. And my dad, he was more of a, um, he, he wrote for radio and television and newspapers. And look, it looks like I'm wearing a newspaper, right? Pretty funny dress. You're allowed to kind of, you think it's pretty funny dress? Yeah. No, I want it cracking up. I'd be like, smiling, that's good. <laughs> okay, so I, so I came from a family of writers. And um, some people say, when did you know you wanted to be a writer? I'm not sure I ever made the decision or, or suddenly chose to be a writer. I just really liked writing. So this really is my, my very first diary. And I bet you can find a mistake in there. I'll read, I'll read you the first line. And I buy to my lunch at school. The menu was pizza and it was good. I buy my lunch, really? Um, and then I wrote, oh yes, at school we learned to write Z and Y and scripted. So now I've learned every letter in scripted except for the letters B, C, E, F, H, K, L, P, Q, R, S, T. <laughs> and then I wrote, of course, I know every letter. So I guess I was excited about writing. I was writing in my diary about about learning to write cursive. Um, and how many of you keep journals or diaries? This summer, when you have a little more time than you probably have in the school year, it would be so cool, I think, if you started a brand new diary and you called it the summer after fourth grade. One thing I love about diaries is if you're mad at somebody or you have a secret crush on somebody or you're worried about something, it's just a perfect safe place to put all your thoughts and ideas. And even if you end up your diary will never say to you, you said that to me yesterday. Or, how can you be mad at her? That's not fair. Or your diary is never going to tell on you or anything. It's just a safe place to sort of empty your mind, put it on paper. And then later, when you hear people saying, oh, I'm afraid of the blank page or the blank screen, you think, I'm not. I've just been writing since I was a kid. So it's, uh, I, recommend, I recommend it to any of you who may become future writers. But it's good for everybody. And also, everybody's kind of a, a writer in this world if you're just writing emails or thank you notes or um, when you're applying to a job or school. You're, you're all writers, so it's really great to, to learn to be a better writer. So, way back in 1994, which is 21 years ago, a magazine called Girls Life asked me if I'd like to write a column for them because, because I'd written Girl Talk. And I said, sure. And, I, and do some of you know this magazine? If you have a big sister, some of you may know it, or it's possible that your middle school library has it. But in this magazine um, is my column, and so my column is always called Dear Carol. So that's me. I am Dear Carol. And sometimes kids will, usually a little bit older than you guys, will send me snail mail or send me email, and I'll do my best to answer. So I've been Dear Carol since 1994. That's a long time. But then there came a day <clears throat> when I had to give myself some advice because when I went to college, I studied literature. In fact, I studied French and Spanish literature, which meant that I read uh, and studied novels written by great French writers and great Spanish writers, and it was so much fun. And I thought, ooh, when I, want to, when I grow up, I want to write a novel. I want to write a novel. I want to write a novel. That'd be so cool. But then I kept writing advice for teenagers. Mostly girls, but also I wrote a book called Fortunes Only for Boys. And it was fun, and it's still fun, and I still do it, and it was gratifying. But I just still wanted to write a novel, so I had to give myself some advice. So I said, Dear Carol, I want to write a novel. And then I said, Well, Dear Carol, have you tried? Have you tried? Maybe you should try. Maybe you should get some therapy. Good idea. Maybe you should take some classes. So I did. I got some therapy. I said, this is my big dream. Why am I not doing it? Why am I not doing it? 
and we talked about that, and that was very helpful. And then I, I went to the Y, and the Y in New York City has some pretty amazing teachers. One of my teachers was Alice Elliott Dark, and she said, you, you can do this, and she helped me think about how to write fiction instead of nonfiction. And so, so I finally did it. I wrote this great big long novel. I was so proud of myself because that was hard to do. And I gave it to my agent, who was sort of my business partner, and she sent it out to editors. And I would love to tell you that everything was immediately came up roses, but it didn't. I got many rejection letters, and I'm going to read you one of them, okay? So let's review. I sent 100 fine pages to, to an editor, and I get three lines back, and here they are. Dear Laura, that's my business partner, at, at the time, as we discussed, enclosed is Carol Weston's Melanie Martin Almost 10, which is not right for our list. I liked the author, but thought the title was a little too special for our market. Thanks for giving us a chance to see it. Okay, so I think I might have cried, but then I thought, what have I learned from this letter? Like, she didn't say too much dialogue, or not enough dialogue, or we need more plot. She just says too special. How many of you think it's good to be special? That's right. It's great to be special. You want to be special. You don't want to be boring. You don't want to be ordinary. You don't want to be one more, one more novel that's predictable. So instead of throwing it away or, or just giving up on my dream, I stuck to it. And I am happy to say that after a few more rejection letters, Kanaf, which is, by the way, this really kind of impressive oh, publisher, yeah. said, sure, I'll publish your first one, The Diary of Noni Martin. I'm so glad you know that book. And that was a book. Um, and then they, liked, they, they said, keep going. So I did a whole series, actually, about a fourth grade girl. What I thought to myself when I was writing this novel, and I really wanted to write for kids, because, you know, here, there, here I was writing advice for kids, so I suddenly thought, why don't I try to write that novel that seems so scary? Why don't I try to write that for kids? And that, that helped me. And now I'm writing a brand new series, and the first one is called Ava and Pip. Well, it is. And um, so Ava is kind of, I was really, I was going to call this book Ava Wren and Her Magic Pen. But that sounded too young. And I was going to call it Ava Wren Almost 10 because I liked that Melanie Martin was going to be almost 10. But in both cases, I felt like she was already 10. Are you guys, are, a lot of you are 9 and a lot of you are 10, is that correct? Yeah. 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 So um, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to make Ava already 10 because she's just a smart little kid. She's an amazing speller. And her big sister, Pip, is very shy. And look, <coughs> it's fine to be shy. In fact, a lot of fourth graders are shy because Confidence is cumulative. You get more and more confident as you grow older. But she's the kind of kid who she's in seventh grade and she's so shy. It wasn't. It wasn't okay. She wasn't talking. Her parents were worried, and it made Ava mad because Ava's like this really good kid, and her parents were just always worried about Pip. And Ava felt bad for Pip, but Ava got mad at Pip too. So that's sort of what this uh, very first book is about. Um, it's also true that Ava and Pip are palindromes, and palindromes are words that are the same backward and forward. In fact, I'm going to read you the first page of this first book, okay? Um, maybe some of you already know this. I don't know. I read this. Dear brand new diary, you won't believe what I just found out. Fifth grade started today, and my homeroom has three Emilys, but only one Ava. So at dinner, I asked Mom and Dad why they named me Ava. Innocent question, right? Well, Dad answered, we like palindromes. Palind what, I said? Palindromes, Dad replied. Words that are the same backward and forward. Like mom, <coughs> M-O-M, Mom said. And like Dad, D-A-D, -D, Dad said. And like Pip, P-I-P, -P, Pip chimed. Apparently, she knew all about this. My full name is Ava L. Rip. When people ask what the L stands for, they expect me to say Lily or Lauren or Louise, but I say it's not L, it's E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. I thought about Pip, Hannah, Ava, and L, and stared at my parents. You chose our names because of how they're spelled? Wow. Then I noticed how you spell wow. How do you spell wow? W-W-W. And suddenly, it was as if, I saw the whole world, or at least the whole world of words, in a brand new way. My parents' names are Anna, 
and Bob. And they are word nerds. So that's how this book starts. Um, and I put some longer words, palindromes in there too, like never, odd, or even. Or the most profound palindrome I know is this one. Do geese see God? Okay, so we're going to read you a couple pages of the talk of that. And then I'll see if you have any questions. But before I read you the finished, you know, two pages from Avon Taco Cat, I'm going to read you from my own sloppy copy so that you can see that how it changes, okay? So in this one it says, Pip and I are off to an amazing start. We are making a children's book. I wanted to write a book called The Duck Out of Luck, but I couldn't come up with a plot. Then I wanted to write a book a goose on the loose, but I couldn't come up with a plot for that either. Finally, Pip and I decided to make an alphabet book because alphabet books don't have plots. I said it could be about animals, but Pip said it should be about fish. Pip loves to doodle fish. Her favorite stuffed animal <coughs> is an orange fish named Otto. <coughs> she named it Otto for two reasons. Number one, Otto is a Otto. It's the same word backward and forward, like Ava and Pip and Mom <clears throat> and Dad, excuse me. And number two, Otto is the name of the fish in a book called, does anybody know? Does anybody know the book of Fish Out of Water? Um, and it's the first book that Pip read all by herself. She has now read a bazillion books, because Pip is the bookworm and Ava's the diary girl. Okay, anyway, so that was the beginning. Now, Pretty similar, different, different, um, and you know, you can see I'm changing other things, but Pip and I are off to an amazing start. We are making a children's book. Okay, Pip and I are off to an amazing start. We are making a children's book. Um, different one. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, but then this one, it's at dinner, mom had a story to tell. And the reason I made this change, very late, this was like a couple weeks before the due date, but my own daughters, they, they know I love them, and, and uh, I know they love me. So they can, like my husband, be pretty hard on me when they're giving me feedback. And Lizzie said, Mom, that, that you started the book kind of in a good way where these kids want to write books, but, but I don't really think it's, I think you just start the book on your page 10. You should just get right into to the scary part and the exciting part with the cat. And I'm like, really? I don't want to change the book. It's gone through all these drafts. I'm already on the 40th draft. I don't know. She's like, trust me, Mom, trust me. And she's pretty smart, Lizzie is. Emmy and Lizzie both uh, occupational hazard of being a kid, of a writer. You gotta, you gotta read the book at least once, sometimes twice. Anyway, Lizzie uh, convinced me to change it, and I'm glad I did. So now I'm gonna read you how the book begins. Dear Brand New Diary, I'm really worried. Now what would happen if I stopped right there? No, come on, one more sentence, right? So we writers, we have to be sneaky. We want to keep you turning the pages. So even if your dad says, dinner, we have to say, wait, wait, I'll be right there. We want you to keep reading. <clears throat> Dear Brand New Diary, I'm really worried. At dinner tonight, Mom said that right before closing, a man came into the clinic with an injured cat. He found him shivering in a tree. The cat was scrawny and scared, and his neck had a gash, and his left ear was bitten up. The man got the cat down and took him to the nearest vet, which was Dr. Gross. Poor cat, I said. Is he going to be okay, the best? I don't know, Mom said. Dr. Gross stitched him up and gave him antibiotics. If he makes it through the night, we'll call the shelter in the morning. If, I said. Mom nodded. I think a coyote got to him. What's his name, the best? No idea, but he's neutered, so he's not feral. Pip and I know that feral means wild, and neutered means he can't make baby cats. But does mom know that stories about hurt cats and dogs make me sad? What does he look like, I asked. He's honey colored, mom said, but his right leg and paw are white, and he has a white zigzag above his nose. Aw, I said, trying to picture the cat's sweet little zigzag. No chip or collar or anything, dad said. No identification at all. Soon Mom and Dad and Pip were talking about other things, including dinner, which was stuffed eggplant. Blech. Dad just started a terrible tradition of meatless Mondays. Unfortunately today, he also made plain <coughs> bow tie meals just for me. Well, I couldn't stop thinking about how lonely that cat probably felt all by himself in a cage, 
at Dr. Gross's. I wished we could go check <coughs> in, but no way would Mom agree to go back to work after she'd already come home and put on her slippers. I was trying to imagine what it must have been like for the skinny cat when the coyote started attacking him. He must have known it was life or death. He probably thought he was a goner for sure. It was lucky he was able to scamper up that tree, but then he must have been too afraid to come back down, and maybe too weak. I bet he was starving as well as petrified. Poor little thing. Suddenly, my eyes and nose started tingling. I blurted, may I be excused? But it was too late. Teardrops fell right onto my bow tie noodles. Are you crying? Pip asked, surprised. Oh, Ava, Mom met my eyes. I'm sorry I brought it up. Dad gave my hand a squeeze, and I ran upstairs to splash water on my face. I don't know why I was getting so upset about a lost, honey-colored cat, but I was. I am. It's just so sad to think of him all alone in a cage instead of a home. Ava, upset. So that's where I'll leave off this book. Um, so I think we have to wind it up, right? I can keep going, or are we good? Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.